Hey. So next up in our topics is distributions. Uh, so everything we've kind of talked about so far before so far before this video um, has been very like um, no, I don't want to say superficial, but it's been very like touchy uh, in the sense that we haven't really gone really deep into anything. We haven't gone into math a lot. So distributions is where we really start getting into into the math. And like figuring out where math and probability really dive into one another. Uh, so let's, um, since it's probably been a while since you saw some of these uh, sets or symbols. So omega, remember, is a set of possible outcomes, which we call the sample space. The set A, which is a subset of omega, we called the events. Um, and what we had was we were trying to figure out the probability of an event A occurring in this omega sample space. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to look at this probability function P and we're going to see when if I have some arbitrary function, when is this a probability function? When does it give us exactly what we want? Like when does it give us probability in essence? So let's look at this. So say we're going to start off with some set of outcomes, right? So I have omega be some set of outcomes. Here, I no longer assume that it's finite. I could have an infinite set of outcomes. Um, it's like, it doesn't matter. Any number of outcomes, any number. You think of it, it's there. Um, and then we're going to look at subsets A of omega, right? So again, here we have um, any subset. And so we're actually going to look at the set of all subsets, 2 to the omega. So if we remember, this is the notation for the set of all subsets. Um, and we're going to look at, again, A is a subset of omega. Uh, so here we're basically defining what our events are. And we're going to define the probability map. So here I'll do this in blue. The probability map is going to be the map uh, where we go from some event, right, from some subset to the real numbers. And that's basically what we've kind of been doing, right? So when I say the probability of flipping a coin to heads, that was one half. I sent it from an event, a subset, to a real number. And so now the question becomes, okay, I can do this for arbitrary things, but not everything is going to give me a probability. When do I have a probability, something nice and simple and cute? Um, and so that's basically what we're going to be looking at next. So one of the first things we might say is, okay, well, one thing we want is the probability of something should never be negative, right? Um, like, it doesn't make sense, right? What's a negative probability? What's the chance of, like, even something not incurring has a positive probability, right? So that's one thing we want. So one easy um, thing that we want um, is for, um, we want P of A to always be positive. Um, okay, one rule, cool. Um, how, what, what about another world? Are there, is there anything else we want? Um, well, another thing we kind of talked about, um, is that, um, like when we're doing unions, right? If the two unions are disjoint, we want their probability sum up, right? So if I have, um, a one six chance of rolling a four and a one six chance of rolling a six, the chance that either of them will occur should be one six plus one six. And so that's the next um, thing that we'll probably require. So here, what we're going to say is if we're looking at these um, sets as disjoint, um, so we're going to partition our event into smaller sets. So here, this is probably a notation you haven't seen, and um, this notation gets, there's a million and a half different notations for this. We will be using square cup. So what does square cup mean in, for us? Uh, so square cup means take the union. So it's the normal union with assumption that A1 intersect, in this case, A1 intersect A2, because that's the one I've kind of pointed at, is equal to empty. So in essence, um, A intersect B implies A intersect B is equal to the empty set. That's it. Um, and we take the, the union. So, um, yeah, uh, if there's any confusion for this, um, let me know. It is a little confusing the first time. 
Um, other ways you kind of see this um, is you see um, this sometimes. Um, you'll see um, this sometimes. Um, sometimes you actually just see a plus. Sometimes you'll just see the plus. So like A plus B. Um, it just depends on who the, the writer is. Anyway, so will you be using square cup? Um, and so since each of these are disjoint, right? No, nothing matches with the other ones. We would think the probabilities should sum up. So we can also require this. So we can require that the probabilities just sum up. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so a thing to remember is while we're here, uh, is that our sets don't necessarily have to be finite, right? So we could do this with an infinite number of things. I know here we're making um, n, right? So we're kind of making it look like it should be finite, but I can make n be infinite if I want. So I can just take an infinite number of things. We just really want that the sum of the probability should sum up to everything. Um, and what this also means is like, if you think about it, the sum of the probability of everything we haven't talked about that. The probability of everything happening, well, this should just be equal to one, right? Like this should be guaranteed to happen. And for us, a one is guaranteed to happen. So um, that's basically, that's it. Th those are the three rules um, we're going to force. Uh, and here we have this. If A is equal to omega, then our probably should be 100%. And these are the rules we're basically going to force onto our um probability function, and this we'll call the rules of proportion and probability. Uh, and so here we have three different rules. One, we want that the probability of every set to be non-negative. Uh, we want addition to whole. So if I can partition my set into smaller parts, then I should be able to just sum up their probabilities. Uh, and then the probability of the whole set is equal to one. So whenever we have a probability function, that satisfies these three things, then we call it a distribution over omega. So a distribution over omega is a probability function, probability function that satisfies these three. And that is basically it. Um, we will now, so after this, we're going to look at how, how these probability functions, like what we can figure out using these probability functions um, and kind of go for there. So we'll kind of stop here for this video um, and I'll see you in the next video.